Hello and welcome to part one of our Mastering Keyword Searching series, The Essentials of Keyword Searching. In this tutorial, I'll explain what keyword searching is, how to identify keywords from your own topic, and how to build a list of keywords to get ready for database searching. First, what is keyword searching? When you're doing a keyword search in most library databases, you are searching the titles, abstracts, and citation information of all of the articles in that database. For the most part, you aren't searching full text, which can be a real blessing for not getting overwhelmed by an enormous results list. The biggest challenge when it comes to keyword searching is matching the words you use in your search to the words authors use in their articles. Let's start with a sample research question. Let's say you've come up with this question. In this form, it is very specific to the project or research you want to conduct, but it is far too specific for a database search and probably won't get you the kind of evidence you need for your literature review. We want to use language that will help us find all of the articles that are related to this, so we need to broaden the ideas a bit. So here's a broader question. For this topic, we'd certainly want to see articles about balance groups, but we may also want to see those that are about other forms of peer support. Similarly, we broaden from physical therapists to health professionals, because chances are that if an intervention works for nurses, physicians, etc., it may also work for physical therapists, and there is a lot more research done about physicians and nurses than there is about physical therapists. Now let's identify the key terms from our question. You can see them highlighted here. But how do you know which terms are your key terms? Think about the articles you want to find. Your key terms are the ideas that have to show up in those articles to make them relevant. So you want to choose enough terms, but not so many that it is unlikely you'll find articles with all of them. Of course, if that happens, you can always adjust your search. And I'll talk more about that in the video about revising your search. Okay, so once we identify the key terms, the next step is to start using those terms to create a search strategy. We in the library have found that tables work really well in helping us think through the words we want to use in our search, as well as keeping those words organized. And what we'll do is start to brainstorm synonyms or alternative terms. You might be asking yourself, but why can't we just use the terms we have and get to the searching already? And you certainly could, but your search won't be as good without this brainstorming. If you remember at the beginning of this video, I said the biggest challenge when it comes to keyword searching is matching the words you use in your search to the words authors use in their articles. The words that authors use can have a lot of variation, and we need to account for that. For example, health professional. Some authors might use that term, but many more will be looking at particular populations, just like we had planned in the original research question. So if we want articles about other health professions, we need to name those professions in our search. Physical therapists, nurses, physicians, occupational therapists, physician assistants, speech language pathologists, genetic counselors, etc. Notice I've used some shorthand abbreviations for the professions. Here, in my own notes, that's fine, but do remember you'll need to type out the entire phrase when we translate these terms over to the databases. Okay, now we need to do that same brainstorming for the other terms as well. One of the things I like about this process is that it can help you think about what fits and what doesn't. For example, are compassion fatigue and burnout similar enough for our topic? Is occupational stress too broad? Often you won't know the answers to these questions until you've run some searches. Speaking of which, you may also not know all the alternative terminology until you've run some searches, but I'll talk more about that in the Refining Your Search video as well. One last note about brainstorming keywords. Remember to include international variations as well as variations on spelling or format. Even these small variations need to be considered in your search. And finally, the other reason I like using a table like this is because it helps me organize my search as well and identify where my ands and ors should be. As the arrows indicate, you or together the terms with the columns and you and together the terms across the columns. But there'll be more on that in the next video, putting your keywords together. So that does it for Essentials of Keyword Searching. I mentioned the next video in the series, Putting Your Keywords Together. It will teach you about and and or as well as several other tricks for successful database searching. See you there.